Hi, my name is Mitra Manesh. I'm a servant. I serve through teaching, coaching, consulting, or any other way that I can find to share what I know with those who want to know. And this Lights On podcast is one of those ways. It was created with consciousness and mindful living in heart. So join us as we travel through many roads of learning and transformation together. And if you enjoy our podcast, please give us feedback by rating us five star and share us with others if you think they may benefit from it. On behalf of my team, I thank you for your presence. In this short episode, I talk about emotional independence, which basically means how we can take charge of our own happiness and our own well-being, even if people in our lives are not understanding or are not helpful to our journey and sometimes even hurtful to our journey. The discussion came about because a participant in my um, overthinking class was speaking about their relationship, their turbulent relationship with their mother and how they were limiting their choices of either going on in the relationship and suffering or stop seeing them. And basically the real hope for them was to um, witness the change in their mother. And uh, so I speak about that and how when we expect or hope or demand uh, people change in order for us to be happy, we really are compromising our own happiness. And more importantly, we're compromising our own power and choices in life. Let's take a listen together. And I hope that this episode somehow serves you. So I am waiting here for a day that my mother, and you can basically, this is a story anybody, of, of my somebody uh, changes their position and their view of life or their view of what happened, for instance, right? And I'm waiting at the door, hoping that that will happen. Can you see my point? Because my point is the true point. And it, believe me, maybe I'm not, I'm actually almost sure that it is, even though I don't know what it is. But that is irrelevant. You are still leaving your well-being in the hands of the person that obviously at this moment is not capable of seeing your point. So that's not a very skillful way of waiting for your happiness, your well-being, your balance, your health to come back because it's not in your command. It's in somebody else's hand. Any time that you are in that situation, and by the way, this could be about a partner in work that you have this problem with, a cousin, in-laws. How many of you have problems with your in-laws? How many people have the problem with their neighbors? I know somebody who went crazy just about their neighbors, or the story that I told you about my wonderful farmer. So, you are waiting for somebody else who has shown you historically that they are not willing to change and their behavior is actually destructive for you. You're waiting at their door. I call it, I have a really bad name for it and I apologize for that, but that's the best way I could understand it when I found myself in that position. In a way, we're begging we're standing at the door, huffing and puffing, but saying, please, I need your understanding and change of opinion and position and belief and behavior before I can be happy and healthy. Could you see that? Could you change? And we're begging. And we're begging. And that's why we're so frustrated. And one day, one day, we wake up and we say, you know what? You stay as you are. Oh, it's an equanimity practice. Dear mother, or not dear, mother, you are as you are. 
and you can fill in neighbor, cousin, in-laws, friend, partner, spouse. You are as you are. May I accept you just as you are. By acceptance, I don't mean agreement or approval. I mean they are as they are. May I see you. May I accept the fact that I chose you with all of your characteristics as the person who brought me to this world. May I, through that acceptance, find my way to my well-being. I'm going to leave you alone. I'm no longer am I going to beg you because I have begged almost too long. So this resignation from begging, because it is begging, energetic begging, I'm saying, please change so I can be happy. Please change so I can be healthy. Please change so that I can move forward. And I'm saying, may you stay as you are and change when you want to. And may I move forward regardless of your state of being, believing, having, doing, saying. I am declaring my independence from a person who's hurting me, whose ideas, whose words, whose the way of living is hurting me. That's the day of independence. And that's the day of freedom. And then when I say that, people say, so we should just let people do whatever they want to do. I say, so there's not much you can do. There is not much we can do. We have not been able to convince anyone of anything all our lives. And we have this illusion of, if I just give them enough evidence, that's what we think. If they, they're just missing information, no, my dear ones, they are missing the consciousness that allows them to get the truth, assuming you're telling the truth, right? And they're not. It's not information they're missing. It is consciousness level that allows us to see. If I'm stuck in level one of thinking, what are you talking about? But this is not right. You shouldn't have been doing this. This is what they did. And do you see how wrong? But I'm not even there. I'm just like looping in my own head. I don't even connect to what you're saying, let alone understand and accept. So you're asking a cop to be a computer. It can't do that. Do you see that? Even if I talk to this cop for eight years, it will never do what my computer can do because it doesn't have that consciousness. Its consciousness at best is to hold the water and drinks for me. That's the, that's the best that this can do. And I'm asking my cop to please allow me to Google things on it. And he's saying, I don't know what Google is. What are you talking about? So you leave them alone, not because you are really not accepting what they have done is wrong. You're leaving them alone because you understand the consciousness of this universe and yourself and theirs. And if they don't have the consciousness to understand this, they will never get it. No matter how many times you speak to them, you provide them with evidence and information, and you even bring witnesses and say, see, Mitra says I'm right. You know, Joseph says I'm right. Reza also agreed with me, but how come you don't get it? Because they don't have the right consciousness for that particular place. I'm not saying they have less consciousness in general. We have blockages. We have bottlenecks in our consciousness. There's somewhere I just go, uh, I can't go forward. And that's her bottleneck. Why? I've got my <laughs> reasons that I can imagine, but it's not my business to do that. Hope this episode answered the question or two for you or provoked and inspired questions in you. I'm so grateful you showed up and listened up. 
Until the next time, be well and stay curious. <laughs>